Praise the Lord. What's up, 1440? How are we doing this afternoon? Did anybody get a nap? <laughs> awesome. Hey, we are thrilled about this afternoon. Are y'all having a good convention so far? All right, we're having an amazing time. We still have uh, some power pack speakers. We're going to have a wonderful last few days. Um, and we know that God is already working and doing things in your life. And we want to hear about it. Let's put up the testify slide again. Scan this QR code. And we want to hear about what the Lord is doing in your life. If you do not have a device, we do have paper, uh, old school paper, so you guys can write it down. But we want to hear about what the Lord is doing in your life. Were you healed in your body? Were you healed in your mind? Were you healed in your spirit? Did something happen? I know God is moving in every one of your lives. Did something happen that you want to share for share with us? I know there is, and because I know God. God is a good God and he's, he's, he's touching each and every one of y'all. And with that being said, tomorrow we are doing our, I probably should get over here again, get out of people's way. We have our pastor panel tomorrow. We love, uh, yeah, go ahead, give it for the pastor panel. One of, our, one of our favorite things that we do, but you guys can scan this QR code and ask your questions. Uh, that way the questions remain anonymous so nobody knows who's asking the questions. Uh, so we get all the juicy questions. No, I'm kidding. Um, but it, they do remain anonymous so you can scan this QR code and ask us tomorrow. Like I said yesterday, my favorite color is blue. My favorite burger is, or my favorite food is a hamburger. Uh, my favorite burger is a smash burger for those of you. That's a new discovery, by by the way, smash burgers, dude, you can't beat them. You can't beat them. Uh, but with that being said, scan the QR code and we'll have that tomorrow. We're looking forward to it. Uh, but without further ado, I want everybody to stand to their feet and I want us to give an awesome 1440 welcome for this man. This man is a, this is kind of like KCBC part two. Okay, we had the KCBC preachathon yesterday. Uh, this man of God graduated from KCBC in 2023, so he's a year removed from it, and he has a powerful testimony. I don't know if he's going to get into it at all, but he he got. I said it yesterday that he got saved just a few months before he became went to KCBC, and now here, just two or three years later, he is speaking to you guys with a message that the Lord's put on his heart, and I know it's going to be a powerful message. He met his wife at KCBC. The card literally says married his girl um, uh, at KCBC. Uh, she heard from her yesterday and he works at Kenneth Copeland Ministries as a prayer team coordinator uh, and he gets to pray and work closely with Miss uh, with Pastor Terry and Miss Iva Bennett. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage Edward Garcia. Praise God. Well, how y'all doing, 1440? Y'all doing good? Y'all look good. Y'all look. Y'all been blessed so far? Y'all been blessed so far? How many of y'all's lives have changed? Even just a, an ounce difference from the time you got here, right? Well, I believe God's going to uh, change you even more, and you're never going to be the same after today. Um, and I believe that the Lord has a word for you. He spoke to me as I was praying for you guys, over you guys. I have a big heart um, for Gen Z. I'm actually a part of it. I just barely made it in, though. I barely made it into Gen Z. I was born in 99. That was a cutoff year. But um, I believe that the Lord is doing something great with y'all. And I'm not the biggest fan of st statistics. What they talk about Gen Z, they're this, they're that. I believe the Lord's doing something really, really mighty with you all and that you're going to set this world on fire for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, let's just pray really quickly and then we'll get into the word. So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just ask you one thing, that Jesus will be magnified during this time. We ask that Jesus is revealed more uh, to who they are in Christ and to who he is in them, Father. And I'm asking you, Lord, that the gifts, the anointings, the talents, the callings upon each individual in this room will be more uh, unveiled and revealed in their hearts and in their minds. 
And that when they leave after this afternoon session, Father, they'll know even more what they are called and created to do. Father, I thank you that they will burn with the fire of the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, Lord. And let them set their families, their schools, and wherever they go off to college on fire for you. And we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I have a couple things I want to give away. First, just not my not the shoes yet. I'm going to use it for a prop and then and then uh, there's some Jordan Jordan 1, so I come bearing gifts. Thanks. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Praise God. Well, I actually I bought these books for myself, but the Lord said, "You better give them to them kids." So I said, "Okay, I'll do that." So I have two books here, two by Nancy Dufresne, one by Jesse Duplantis. Man, look at y'all just Hold on. Let me let me get the book out first. Let me let me read the title. A sa- and I, I want to give it to somebody. You're actually going to read it. I mean, you're actually going to read it. A sound and disciplined mind. Somebody come, somebody come get it. Lady, ladies first. Ladies first. I'll let you, that's not fair. You get up here. <clears throat> there we go. This is by Nancy Dufresne. Faith and the power of God. Who wants that? I saw, saw him. Scoob- Scooby-Doo? Hand that back to Scooby-Doo. He has a Scooby-Doo shirt on. Okay. Uh, Jesse Duplantis, it's his newest book. I, I, has, a, has a young lady got one already? I apologize, I apologize. Hey, 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 praise God. Praise God. Actually, I will take the shoes for right now, so just so I have them. They're, they're clean, there's, there's no dirt on the bottom, they're clean, so don't worry. Now, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to use it as a prop first, and then I'll give it to you. Size nine and a half, by the way. Don't, don't lie. <laughs> okay, pray. Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen. Well, I don't have to question if y'all are awake or not, so let, let's get your Bible out. Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 2. And what's the title of this theme for this year? <clears throat> what, what does it mean? What has our pastors and the speakers been? What's the definition of established? Just throw out some stuff. Permanent. Permanent. Okay. Just two people? Okay, praise God. I'm going to read it out of the theme um, that was posted on Southwest Believers Convention 1440. And it's explained here. Established means to make firm, confirm, or make sure. To show something to be true, to make stable, and to put on a firm basis or foundation. And while I was reading this, I went through the, the theme page multiple times, made a lot of notes to see what the Lord had me to talk to you about. And I believe that he pointed out something very specific to me. And he was really dealing with me, the understanding of established in the, in the sense of being something being confirmed and to show something to be true. And in reading the definition, the Lord has showed me that there's always a level of the display of God when it comes to being established. When you're establishing something, it should come out of you. It should you should something should be evident that there's something different about you and that you're not just establishing in the world or what social media has to say. But what does God have to say and what has he put in you? And I'm really going to talk about the display of God. I I like uh, Reaction. I like response. Don't say amen if it's not good. Really, if you if you mean amen, hallelujah, praise God, please say it. I would really like that. And um, I want to just talk about something here. You know, in the Bible, it always talks about that, that your faith will be tested. It says in the book of James, it says when trials come, not if trials, they're going to come. Jesus said that you're going to have tough times, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And where does where does Christ live? Right. So you are automatically born again and overcomer of all the, the, the failures and the death in the world. You are already overcoming all of that because you have the faith in the one who overcame. Amen. Amen. And something here is that when a trial comes, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's actually something to, to rejoice in because you have the opportunity to display the God on the inside of you. You have the opportunity to, to respond differently. You have the opportunity to, to say something differently, to think something, to do something different than what maybe your unsaved friends might do. Amen. 
you have the opportunity because you have the creator of the universe living on the inside of you. Think about that. The one who created the universe, galaxies, planets, the solar systems, he lives on the inside of you. So that means you can create the world that you live in by the words that you say. But I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to go into that. I don't want to get off my my message here. But you always have a chance to confirm and show something to be true. So Colossians chapter two, this is a theme scripture, verses six through seven in the ESV. It says, therefore, as you received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. And today we're going to talk about faith and power. And what are the byproducts of walking in him and being established? Like I said a few seconds ago, there should be evidence that you're filled with God. There should be, there should be tangible evidence. Not just saying, oh yeah, I believe in God, but you don't look different from the world or your unsaved friends. You should look completely different. Say something completely different. Do different. Be different. You've heard the saying that you're built different. You really are built different, right? You have God living on the inside of you. Amen. That means no devil is big enough to stop you. Amen. I'm going to try this side over here. I said, there's no devil in hell big enough to stop you. Yeah. You know, Satan himself cannot stop you. Amen. And no, like, you're not, don't, don't be like, oh, you don't, I don't want the devil to hear me. I, I, he's going to come attack. No, no. He's the very dude we want to hear what we got to say, because we have to remind him that it says in Colossians that Jesus spoiled or he stripped the power from the devil. He made a show of him openly and triumphed over the devil. That means he had a parade over the devil and drug him down the road in eternity and said, this ugly little thing has no power in your life. He has no say in your life. So the moment of thought of depression, anxiety is not of God. The very second it comes, you have the opportunity to display the God on the inside of you. Amen. What should come out of your mouth that says, no, I'm not that. Amen. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. And you're feeling sick. No, no. You know, sometimes there's like a, a cold that goes around in school. Oh, it's just flu season. You're not susceptible to flu season. Amen. Now, I'm not saying if you get it, there's no condemnation in that, but you are the healed. If you're in Christ... You're in the one that bore your sins. He bore and took stripes and was whipped and was wounded for you so that you can live healed and whole the rest of your life. I'm talking strong and healthy. How many of you play sports? Amen. You can live and play sports without having one injury or one strained muscle. Ah. Amen. You know, I played football growing up my whole life. I'll tell a little bit of my story. Um, I had aspirations to go to the NFL. I had opportunities my mom and dad are right here to go play Division I football. I was a quarterback for my high school in Austin, Texas, but this was before I was saved. And uh, my first game in my senior year, I blew out my left knee. ACL was completely torn in half. And that's all I did growing up. Football, football, breathing, living, sweating. Right, right, Dad? That's, that's all we did. I'm talking every season of the year, every day, I was either in pads or I was working out, doing some kind of drill, doing push-ups, doing something. So that was my God, right? There should only be one God in your life, and his name is Jesus. Amen. I'm not, not no sport, not no girlfriend, not no boyfriend, not your mom, not your dad. God should be the only one, the number one in your life. He should have your full attention. All that to say is that I didn't know God. I was far from him. Matter of fact, there was at one point when I went to university, I didn't believe in God. I thought this, this Christianity stuff is fake. I don't believe in this God. You know, he's not helping me. I'm depressed because my, my whole life crumbled. It felt like my world was shattered because I wanted to go play football, right? But thank God that there was a God out there that created me. And he met me. I was in my closet. I was seeking, crying out for God. April 23rd, 2020, as Pastor Holden said, just a, just a little bit of it, I was depressed. That day, I was going to kill myself. At 11.45 p.m., I was going to kill myself. I knew where the gun was, cocked and loaded. I was ready because I was depressed. Depression is not of God, young men and young women. It's not. And I'm going to get to some stuff later. And the, the Lord has a word for you. Um, but I, it was it. I, I didn't know what to do. My whole world was crumbled. Right. 
How many of you ever dealt with some stuff and it felt like your whole world was gone? It's like, I, I, I thought I was going to do this, but it looks, seems like God has a different plan for me. God's plan is always the right plan. Amen. All that to say, I opened my Bible to Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. You don't have to turn there. But it says, God is an ever-present help in a time of need. God is always there with you. Not just on the outside, he's living on the inside. And so when you have a bad day, when there's something going on, you have the opportunity to first go on the inside and say, God, I need you. I need your help. Guide me out of this. And guess what? He's faithful. God loves you. He cares for you more than you think. And he will help you to be overcomers in this life. All that to say, I read the scripture and it looked like the scripture jumped off the page. And do y'all know what a zip tie is? You like put something around? The, that, that scripture wrapped itself around me and it like, like something pulled it, right? And my parents will tell you, I was in my closet. I, it looked like somebody was throwing me up and down in the air and there was nobody else in the room with me besides them. They were just looking like, what's going on? What's wrong with this dude? He going, boop, 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 boop. He's going all over, the, all over the room, right? And I felt, I felt the hand. You don't have to believe it, but I know what I, I, I felt. There's ugly, dark, long, gnarly f fingers and long, dirty nails came from the ground and went on the inside of my body and started pulling me down. Right. Hell is a real place. But guess what? You're not going there. Amen. Amen. You're not going to hell. You're going to heaven to be with Jesus forever. Right. And then this hand from heaven came down and it was a clean. It just felt like beauty. It felt like peace. Obviously, who, who are those two people? God and the devil, right? And the hand went on the inside of me and started pulling me up. And that's why my body was going up and down like that. And I had never cried out the name of Jesus in my entire life until that night. Right? So I said, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, forgive me. And when I did that, the hand up top like ripped me off, ripped me down. And it felt like a, a, a sticker. When you pull off a sticker off the back of it, you still got the back of it. And then I feel like I woke up out of like a simulation or a game. And all of a sudden there was this peace on the inside of me. And I did my best to think about how depressed I was just a few seconds before. And the thoughts never came back. I've never been depressed since. Right. But I'm here to tell you that you have a God on the inside of you that will help strengthen you. He will empower you to not just barely get through your day, but to be an overcomer and to destroy every work of the devil in your life. God's not interested in you barely getting along, barely passing your test, barely making it by. There's a God that will help you in every area of your life. Amen. Amen. So fast forward, like Pastor Holden said, I came to KCBC. I learned what bi the Bible was. I started, never had re really read the Bible since then. And um, God's so good and gracious. But I'm here to tell you that God's doing a supernatural work in this generation. I truly, truly, truly believe it. And if you will, if you will give yourself to it, you will never be the same after this convention. I mean that. You will never be the same. So that's just a little bit of my story. And I, I'm saying this because now my, the byproducts of my life are different. The byproducts before I was saved was depression. I was angry. I was mad. I was rude. You didn't want to be around me. I was just annoying. It, was just, it, was just, it wasn't it. It wasn't it. But when the Holy Spirit, and I, I believe Pastor Mark Hankins talked about the power of the Holy Spirit when he was here, did he? He changes your personality, Right. I wouldn't, the person before you, I wouldn't be smiling. I wouldn't even be talking in front of you. I would not want to be in front of a room with teenagers. I thought they were annoying. But obviously not now, right? I'm, I'm talking to a whole group of them. Praise God. But you're not annoying. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But the byproduct of your life should be different. And I want to give an example. Of, I worked at a middle school a, about three or four months after I got saved. It was during COVID when I got saved. And where I was from, all the schools were shut down. But I worked with a, I'm sure, have y'all like, were virtual online with school at one point? So I worked with, did y'all like it? It was, it was no. oh, Jesus name. It was horrible, right? But I had to work with some kids in school. They were a part of a, like a social behavioral skills. They, they had dealt with a lot of issues, a lot. And I was just saved, barely was understanding the Bible. And there was this one kid, now you can't really talk, bring up a conversation of Jesus in a school district. But I always had my Bible on my desk reading. And if they engaged in the conversation, I was able to little, you know, talk to them about the Lord. But this kid, 
he was kept asking me about quit. God's not real. Are you capping? Stop capping, bro. He's not real. Stop, stop doing all. And he did not like God at all. A little sixth grader. And he was a little more mature than your average sixth grader. And all of a sudden, he, he went outside and he was playing football or something. And if you ever had like a back spasm or pulled a muscle, you could like barely turn and it like locks up your whole body. That happened to him. And then he said, Mr. Garcia, Mr. Garcia, I'm hurt. I got to go to the nurse. I got to go to the nurse. And I'm like, the first thing that came to my mind was, do you believe that God can heal you? This kid didn't believe in God. He said, I really, he was, he was on other things going on. But all that to say, he said, yes, I believe. Because I had been talking to him about the scriptures weeks before that. And all of a sudden, I, I just got my like two fingers, put it on his shoulder. I said, if you believe God can heal you, you're going to get healed right now. This kid could barely walk. He was like, oh my goodness. I said, in the name of Jesus, you are healed from this. The next step he took, he started running down the hallway and he was completely healed. And he didn't go to the nurse. You see, it's not me, but if you realize, and the, the devil's biggest tactic is to get you to not realize who's on the inside of you. If he can get you thinking about you all day, what you got to go through, uh, the bad things going on, uh, things on the circumstances on the outside, you will never fully get to who you are born again to be. Right. But I had to yield to the Holy Spirit. I'm saying this because this generation is going to do things this world has never seen before. I believe that teachers are going to come to you and ask for prayer. They're going to come to you. Hey, pray for my kid. They need help. They're going to come to you because there's a God on the inside of you that wants to be released. It's like that song, who let the dogs out? He's not a dog, but there's an all powerful God on the inside of you. He wants to come out. He wants to come out. But you got to let him out. Amen. You got to let him out. Praise God. Praise God. And I believe he wants to do that with you, each and every one of you. And don't ask yourself, who am I to do? I ask the same thing. Who am I to be able to, to allow God to do these things? You're loved of God. Amen. He loves you. He loves you. Say, God loves me. God loves me. Let's say that one more time. God loves, me. God loves me. Praise God. And we're talking about faith and power. So the young kid got faith from the word because we were talking about it. And that faith was able to connect to the power of God. We'll get to some scripture. But I'm going to give one more example of, of what your life is able to, to produce. Uh, this, my parents are involved in a lot of this stuff. But there was this man. He was across our street. He was listening. He had some headphones on. Apparently, you remember this? He fell down and he started having a seizure. And they called on me. I'm like, I ain't no doctor. I don't know. Who's gonna, they said, Edward, Edward, come get this man. I'm like, what? This man, I don't know what to do. He called a doctor, called a 911 or something. So, but I had an unction. And when I say these things, an unction, an unction, a leading, I was led. It's the Holy Spirit. He speaks to you. He speaks to you. How many of you have heard the voice of the Lord? Everybody's hands should be up. Because you have. You might just not recognize it. The more you hang around a person, the more you understand their voice and can hear their voice. Like if you're in a crowd of a thousand people and your mom yelled your name, would you, would you be able to recognize her voice? Why? So they say, yeah, the mama, my mom don't stop talking. My mom Why would you recognize her voice? Because you grew up with her. You heard her since you were, you can even understand words. Same thing with God. And you know how to hear his voice? Read your Bible. That's the first way. Get in your Bible. Say, read your Bible. Read your Bible. You should read your Bible every day. At least, at, well, at least one chapter a day. But all that to say, I was led of the Lord to go to this man. And I had never really experienced anything like this. So, but I was studying Mark chapter 16. Go with me there. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 in verse 17, it says, and these signs will follow them that believe. How many of you believe in Jesus? That means these next things coming up, they will happen with you if you allow it. It says, in my name. Say, in my name. In my name. And what name is, he, what, what name is that? Jesus. Let's say it louder. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Ooh. You shall cast out devils. Did you know you can do that? Whew. Praise God. They shall speak with new tongues. How many of you speak in other tongues? If you don't, we can change that today if you want it. We can, we can get you baptized in the Holy Ghost. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Not they might recover. They will. But you have to do what first? Believe 
in the name. In the name of Jesus. So I went to this man, laid my hands on him, and he's like going. Have you ever seen Buddy have a seizure? It's not, it's not pretty. And um, I said, in the name of Jesus, you stop right now. And this man stopped, got out of a seizure, and woke up. He looked at me. He had this big smile on his face. And I was like, what just happened? <laughs> this man was going berserk. Like he, he wasn't hearing me. He wasn't comprehending anything. But all of a sudden, when the name of Jesus is spoken to anything in your life, that chaos has to shut down and it has to listen to the most powerful name that is in heaven and earth and under the earth. Every devil flees at the name of Jesus. So he stopped. My parents are witnesses. And then an ambulance came, got him help. And next day we saw him just walking normal like this. He was restored. Why? Because of me? No. I'm none, this, this body is just dirt, right? This, we're made of earth. But it's the God on the inside that wants to come out. And he wants to use you. He wants to use you. How many of you want to be used of God? How many of you want to be on fire for God? Not just barely, oh, I got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm talking big Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah. You just, you just burn for God everywhere you go. Amen. Praise God, praise God. Y'all yeah, 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 make a sense? I'm going to make a sense a little bit here. <laughs> praise the Lord. So let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Remember, we're talking about faith and power. Say faith and power. And we are very familiar with this story. It's the woman of the issue of blood. Mark chapter 5. Let y'all get there. Let me know when y'all are there. 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 Amen. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 24. It says, Jesus went with him. This is talking, he was going with Jairus to go uh, heal his daughter, right? But in the midst of that, he stopped. He says, Jesus went with him and the people followed crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. Wow, that's crazy. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. She was broke, and she was sick. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, say immediately. immediately. The bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. And Jesus realized at once that healing power, it's a healing power. In the King James, it says virtue. It means power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? Remember at this time, there's a bunch of people surrounding him, touching him, pushing him. He's getting moved. But a touch of faith will stop God. A touch of faith will get his attention. A touch of faith from you will get him to bless you in whatever need or want that you have at the time. His disciples said to him, this is verse 31, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? And he kept on looking around to see who had done it. The frightened woman trembling at the realization of what had happened to her came and fell down to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Remember, we're talking about faith and power. And remember, we're, I'm talking about the display of the power of God. So faith is the connector to God. Think of a, anybody got a, a phone charger on them? Anyways, a phone charger, if you get the, the big part, the block, you put it in the wall, right? And then you put the other end in your phone. That's the only way for power to flow to, get, to charge your phone. Now think of it this way. Think of faith as that charger. The block goes to God. He's the power source. And where does the power source live? Where does God live? That means you're full of power. Think about that. You're full of the power where God said light be. He created everything. He lives in you. That same power, right? And that, that other part connects to who? Connects to you. You're, you're not a phone, but think of you being the phone, from getting the power from the, the source. And that the charger is faith. Faith is the connector from you to God. Amen. 
And it says your faith made you well. You can say faith has made a way. Because what did it say? What came out of Jesus? What did it say? Healing power came out. It didn't say faith came out of him. It said healing power came out. It was the power that healed him, but the power can't heal unless faith is connected to it. Amen. So when you're established in faith, you can get more established and rooted in God when you see God display his goodness and his power in your life. How many of you are believing for something? Anything. Whether it's maybe it's a car, maybe it's a next steps. If you're graduating high school, going to college, you're believing for something. You know what you need? You need the power of God working in your life. I'm not just talking uh, feeling something. I'm talking tangible evidence that power is working. I remember when I first came to KCBC, I barely had any money. I had a little money off investments, but I was just living off what I had. And I had sold some seed because I was not able to pay tuition. I was actually negative in my account. Not no more. Thank God the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. But I sold seed and then I'm like, Lord, I need this tuition to be paid off because I can't afford that. My food, where I live, my car. I was barely eating, not no more. Gaining a little weight since then. Uh, but I sowed seed and I was expecting the power of God in my finances. So I said every day, I said, Lord, I thank you for victory in my finances. I thank you. You've paid off my tuition. And if you're going into college, do we have college kids going into college in here? God can pay and wants to pay off your entire tuition if it's not. He wants to do it, but you got to want him to do it. And anyways, I said, Lord, thank you for paying off my tuition. And then all of a sudden I, I, I'm walking, I get this call and it's, it's the dean of the school, the principal, if you will. And they say, someone has just paid off your entire tuition. I said, what? I said, say that again. So someone has paid off your entire tuition. I'm like, oh, mouth drop. But it was the it wasn't me. It's it's active faith in God releases his power in every area. Your mind, your finances, your family, your relationships, your friends, your, your, your parents, your next steps, your body. He will work in every area. But you got to want him to work and his power to flow through that. Amen. So that's the power of God on this play. And this woman of the issue of blood received that healing power. Amen. And I know that you want to witness the power of God. And I didn't tangibly feel anything, but I saw it working. Right. The power of God doesn't mean it's in manifestation. Just if you feel something, power is always here. The power of God is in this room right now. But guess what? It's not always. How do I say it? tangible or manifest? You can't feel it all the time. You want to know how? By faith. This is what all this con entire convention is about. This whole ministry has been built off faith. And what is faith? Now faith is the substance. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So what is your hope in? What are you looking forward to? What's, I know Pastor George talked about vision. What are you looking forward to? Right? If there's nothing you're looking forward to, there's no faith. And nothing will ever happen. Right. You have to look for have a hope, a hope. I'm not talking about the world's definition of hope. You never you ever heard somebody say, oh, I hope so. What does that sound like? That sounds like I, I wish or like we'll see. It's like a roll of a dice. That's not the hope the Bible talks about. The hope in the Bible is a cheerful, confident expectation. That means I know that I know I'm going to receive what I'm believing for. And I know Mark Hankin was, was in here. And I'm, he might have said this, but how would you act if you already had what you were believing for? Yeah. Let's try this out over here. Amen. <clears throat> Whatever you're believing for. Maybe it's tuition paid off. Maybe it's a new car. Maybe it's your next steps. How would you act if you got that million dollars you were believing for? Yeah. I'm going to try, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try this out. Or whatever you're believing for. That's hope. It's a confident, yes, I got it, Lord. I got it. Thank you. Saying that's what I deal with my tuition. Thank you. You've paid off every day. I kept stirring myself up. Thank you, Lord, for doing this. And then it, it happens. Faith is very, very simple. Amen. It's very simple. If, if somebody, if it's complicated, if it's just complicated, it's not being taught right. Faith is very simple. You have a confident expectation. You believe that you receive and you believe that this book is true. Everything in here. So you act 
on what it says to do. Amen. That is faith. Just put it simply, believe and act like the word of God is true. And that's faith. <clears throat> and going and continuing on faith and power, gave the two testimonies regarding the, the kid in, in middle school, the man across the street. And the main thing the enemy, like I said, tries to do is to get you to not realize who's on the inside of you or to who you are in Christ. And if you go with me to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Praise God. Thank you, Lord. First Corinthians chapter one. Let me turn there. Praise the Lord. Is this making sense so far? Are you getting something? Just a little, little something? I hope so. I never, I never preached to teenagers exclusively. There have been some in the crowd before, but not a whole group of them. So I know y'all let me know if I'm doing good or not. If I'm not, just tell me. Hey, I, I, I like it straight up. I like it straight up. I don't like it sugar-coated around the, being around the bush or none of that. So... The power of God. So what is the power of God? First Corinthians chapter one, verse 17. It says, for Christ, this, talk, this is Paul talking. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel or the good news. Not with wisdom of words or persuasive words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Or they take away the power. You probably heard the scripture. The tradition of men. It, it, it just shuts down the power of God. So religion and you got to do this, do this. You got to do it this exact way and then you'll be able to get what you want. No, the God is not. A, he's not religious in the sense of you got to follow a bunch of rules. Right. He, he that was what the law was in the Old Testament. Right. But now we live by what? What do we live by to please God? Faith. We live by faith and go with me to verse. Let's continue on verse 18 it says for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, how many of you are saved? Yeah. Ooh, it says, it is the power of God. What is the power of God? It's the gospel. And what's the gospel? Paul talks about it being a quote unquote mystery, but it's not a mystery to you anymore because the Bible says in chapter two that the Holy Spirit has revealed it to you. And Colossians says that this is the mystery Christ lives in you. So where does the power live? In us. I'm keeping, I'm going to keep going back to that because you're more powerful than you think you are. Amen. You're not some down, dirty teenager that cannot do nothing and barely pass in your class. That's not you. Right? You got the power of the living God on the inside. You are somebody. You're not a nobody. Don't ever listen or entertain that thought. You're not a nobody. Some of you might not even want to be here, but the, the word of God is being infused in you. And you're going to realize one day who you are. And like I said, nobody and no devil is going to be able to stop you. And now let's go down to verse 24. It says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, it says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And where does Christ live? In us. Christ lives in you. I want you to become God inside minded. Always think about who's on the inside of you. Because if you can do that, you will never fail in this life. God will never lead you into a path of death. He has a good plan. It's only good. So anything bad that happens, it's not God. Right? Sickness, death, disease, poverty, it's not God. God only wants something good for you. He has plans that are good and for you to prosper. So you may be asking. So you might not know, you may not feel like you have power. So you might be asking, well, I need more power. You don't need more. I heard a, a, a man of God say he was asking God, God, I need more power. I need more power. Say, so you don't need more power. You need more gospel. Because what, what, what is the power of God? The gospel. It's Christ. And where does Christ live? In us. So you don't need some more power from him. He, God has gave, given all of his power and has placed it in you. Amen. So what we need is called revelation. Say revelation. revelation. It's when the Holy Spirit gets the word and he does a work in your heart and he unveils and reveals what's on the inside of you. And you can only get that by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you try to understand the Bible with your mind, You'll be confused. You got to understand it 
with your spirit. Be in, come on, Lord, what does this mean? Because naturally, some things in the Bible, I'm still like, what in the world? The Bible's a crazy book in the Old Testament. Like, Jesus, man, what is going on? But if you understand it with this, it'll, it'll always be something that you cannot obtain. But we're not obtaining with your mind. You're obtaining with the God on the inside of you. Amen? So the power of God lives on the inside of you. And now I want to get to something that it really touches my heart. And I know it's probably been mentioned before, but I'm not the biggest fan of uh, the statistics of this generation. I know what they say, but just like we talk about a doctor, you don't always believe the report of the doctor. Same thing with a statistic. I don't care what nobody has to say about this generation. Are you depressed or lost? They're rude. They're always on their phone. They don't know what to do. They're never coming back. I don't. That's a bunch of baloney. That's a bunch, that's a bunch of baloney. It's not true. Amen. Amen. That's not your identity. And before I was here, the Lord said he's going to change the identity of a generation. Because I was reading some studies. It says that Gen Z is the most depressed generation. Say that's baloney. You're not a depressed generation. And when I was praying, I heard the Lord say that if you will give yourself to this convention and even after, if you continue reading your word, if you continue in prayer, if you continue being different because you're built different, he's going to change your identity from a depressed generation to a God possessed generation. Amen. I don't mean possessed of a like of, of a devil. That's not what or not God's not going to come a, against your will, make you do something. But you're going to become so filled with God that they're going to start doing more studies. I'm like, man, these kids not depressed no more. What's going on with these kids? They're going into schools and laying hands on their friends and they're healed. They're, they're praying for their teachers and they're getting salary increases. Man, these young kids got brand new paid off cars. Their tuitions are paid in full. They can't seem to be depressed or sad. They're not anxious. They're not depressed. They can't even be defeated because you're full of the living God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. From depressed to God possessed. And you know, when the Lord speaks to you, always go to the scripture to confirm it. So when I heard that, I said, Lord, I need scripture because I'm not about to come to this, these kids and speak lies. And I got my pastors here. They, they'll let me know. Go to the book of Luke, chapter 24. And this is where some of y'all are going to get excited. I believe y'all going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. How many of you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost today? <laughs> Woo! Praise God. Luke chapter 24. Oh, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? Yes. Oh, he loves you. He cares for you. <laughs> and he has a good plan for you. I'm trying not to bust out laughing right now. I'm trying to contain myself. Here we go. Woof. Luke chapter 24. <laughs> Verse 17. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 24. And this is after Jesus was crucified and the disciples go to look for him. He's not there. And verse 17. No, I start in verse 16. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. Verse 17. He asked them. What are you discussing so intently as you walk? They stopped short. It says here in the NLT, sadness written on their faces. There was, oh, look, they did to my Lord Jesus. I don't see him in there. Like, what do they do, my Lord? Where's he at? They're just dep they're sad or depressed. They don't know where he's at. Right. But if you continue down in that chapter. Remember the word from depressed to God possessed. So what are they right now? They're not God, but they're all, oh, where's my Jesus? Where's my Jesus? Go, go to verse 49. Go to verse 49. Praise God. Actually, let's back up for a minute. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Yeah, let's do, let's do verse 49, verse 49. And at this time, Jesus kept walking with them and <clears throat> he was talking with them. And then these disciples asked him, hey, come stay with us overnight. 
And he started, Jesus glorified, he came up out of the grave. He was unveiling and teaching them the scriptures. You know, he was teaching about himself. And it, they asked each other, did not our hearts burn within us? You see, when the Holy Spirit starts to unveil the word to you, you start to get on fire. You start to change. You're not, you're not the same. And I believe that you will never be the same after this. Because the Holy Spirit is revealing the scriptures. <laughs> Praise God. And you're going to have this sense in you. Oh, man, I feel like I got to run. I got to jump. And, you know, if you're on fire, you don't sit still. You just start taking off. <laughs> Oh, praise God. And he started telling them, and, and this is when Jesus, he, he blew just like God did with Abraham and gave him life in the book of Genesis on the disciples. And they were born again of the spirit, but they weren't yet fully baptized. So there's a process of being set on fire. The Bible says in Matthew chapter six, chapter five, verse six, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. But the, the hunger and thirst is a constant hunger. A constant thirst. You're not just going to get set on fire tomorrow. You got to take, be diligent, stay in your word. That's why I said even after this, you continue. And guess what? You just keep adding coals to the fire. And next thing you know, you start with like a little candlestick and you turn into a wildfire that cannot be contained. And then you know what happens with the wildfire starts catching other people on fire. (laughs) Oh, I can see revival breaking out in schools. Y'all believe it? In your in your school. Y'all going to go to y'all going to go to outside time or recess. What do y'all call it? And all of a sudden, there's going to be worship in the hallways. Y'all, what do y'all call it? Recess? That's elementary, right? That's elementary, right? And all of a sudden, I just see kids just like, I'm going to lay hands on this person. Gets healed. That person goes lays hands on somebody else. They get healed. And next thing you know, the teachers can't contain the kids because they're on fire for God and revival is breaking out. The awakening is here. It's here. It's not coming. It's not in. A, it's here. OK. You got to step into it by faith and connect yourself. Right. So they're born again of the spirit, not yet fully baptized. And Jesus said in verse 49, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with what? Power from heaven. Power. And this is also what John the Baptist spoke over in Luke chapter three and verse 15. He says, there is one coming who is who I'm not worthy to even tie the latchet of his sandal. And he, speaking of Jesus, will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. We all know the Holy Ghost, but I want on, I want on fire. Right? I, I, want the, I, want, I want on fire. <laughs> Ooh, I want to say I want I want him fire. Praise the Lord. So this is a continue. The book of the go to the book of Acts chapter one. This is a continuation of the book of Luke. Amen. Y'all expecting the Holy Ghost is going to fall here in a minute. Amen. I believe you're going to get filled. People are going to be healed. Jesus mighty name. Jesus mighty name. Acts chapter one. Praise God. And verse four. It says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. And Jesus said, but wait for the promise of the father, which say thee, you have heard of me. For this is what I just read for John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. And verse eight says, but you will receive power. Say power. power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. And how does faith come? By hearing. hearing. So what did the apostles hear? They heard heard the word of God from the word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. So when he said, you wait here. So just imagine him speaking to you. Hey, y'all wait here. (laughs) In a few days. The Holy Spirit, the power of God is going to fall on you and you're going to be filled and fire is going to come upon your head. Right. So what what came? Faith came. Right. Remember, faith is the connector to the power of God. So now they have a hope. Now they have an expectation of what to look for. Remember, a confident, cheerful expectation. 
So they were in that room. What do you think they were doing in that room? I believe this is just me. I could be wrong, but it's wrong. Throw it out. I believe they're walking. Oh, I'm ready for the Holy Ghost, man. I'm ready for the Holy Ghost to fall. Y'all ready? You ready for the Holy Ghost? You ready for the Holy Ghost? I, I'm ready. I believe they said they were praying and supplicating. That supplication means a strong desire for what they're believing for. And I believe that we have a strong desire rising right now and the Holy Ghost is going to fill you. So they're in that room. I'm ready for the Holy Ghost to fall. I want power. I want power. I want power. And then it says over in Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like that as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them that began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. Yeah. Woo-wee! I feel the fire of God right now. Yeah. Glory to God. And say goodbye. Do you remember Peter? Denied Jesus three times. I bet you he was mad. I bet you he was depressed. But remember, we're going from depressed to God possessed. And next thing you know, you got Peter standing up in the midst of thousands. The one who denied Jesus. <laughs> Full of the Holy Ghost and power now. Possessed with God. And he said, they're, and they're the, the Pharisees and the religious people saying they're just drunk. He said, bro, it's nine in the morning. How are they going to be drunk this early? He said, they're not drunk as you think. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in these last days, he's, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams and your old men will see visions. I'm here to tell you that the spirit of God is being poured out over the generation Z and you're going to be set on fire. You're going to go back to your hometown and your state, wherever you're from, and you're going to bring the power of the Holy Ghost to your school, to your home, to your friends, to your mama, to your daddy. You know, matter of fact, after this session, say, Mom, I'm full of God. I'm on fire. Dad, look at me. I'm full of God. I'm ready to do what God has called me to do. Because I'm here to tell you, no devil is going to stop what God has started in you. Woo, praise God. Praise God. Let's celebrate for about 10 seconds. Stand up with me. Oh, Father, we thank you. Let's just thank him for the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice. Lift your voice and thank him for the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the power of God. Oh, if you pray in other tongues, let's do that right now. Oh, could we get a piano up here or somebody? Oh, and while you're doing that, being possessed, it means, look, these shoes are mine. They're, they're my possession. I can give them. And you remember when Peter and John were going to the temple to pray? They were going to the temple to pray and they saw this lame man who hadn't walked in 40 years. And if you ever had a cast on, if you look at your arm or your leg, when you take it off, it looks like a pencil compared to the other arm. Think of a man that hadn't walked for 40 years. How skinny do you think his legs were? Probably like my finger. Can you jump on legs with no muscles like that? And Peter and John, full of God. Came to the gate and this lame man was expecting something. <clears throat> and Peter and John he says, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have, what I do possess is this man named Jesus on the inside of me. He said, what I do have, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to give you faith. And this God that was raised from the dead, died for your sins, is seated at the right hand of God, praying for you young men and young women right now. Jesus is praying for you right now. That means Jesus' faith works every time. So whatever he's praying is going to happen in your life. He said, what I do have 
is this. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 40 years, not able to take a step. And all of a sudden, he grabbed him, pulled him up. And what did it say? He started walking, leaping, <laughs> and praising God. You can't jump on fragile legs like that. You know what I think? The power of God was so strong that muscles just popped on his legs. Ligaments were strengthened. Tendons were strengthened. And the muscle just popped up. And he walked into the temple and said, praise God. Praise God. Jesus is real. He healed me. That's the power of God. And the power of God is going to sweep this nation. I really do believe he wants to use this generation. <clears throat> if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. <clears throat> you might be asking yourself, who am I? I hear that. I'm hearing that right now. Who am I? Who am I? You know, that's what the prophet Jeremiah told God. But God said, this day, I'm going to set you over nations. And I'm going to put my words in your mouth. That's what God wants to do with you today. If you want, if you were, I'm going to, let's not do this right now. <clears throat> Could we have this move? If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And you want God to touch your mouth. I'm not just, when God touches you, you get set on fire. If you, I'm, I'm talking to the ones that really want it. If you don't, I'll let the Lord deal with you for another minute or two. But I'm talking right now. If you're hungry, just like you wanted these shoes, you should want God more. Yeah. These things will get thrown up. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will, ne will never pass away. Yeah. And you've been born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. No devil's going to stop you. I hear that so clearly. I don't care what the thought of depression, what feeling, just because you feel something doesn't mean that's who you are. Just because you're tempted to, to, to watch something, that doesn't mean who, that's who you are. You know, Jesus was tempted in every way. Temptation is not a sin. Amen. If you're tempted to, to cuss, to watch something you're not supposed to, to lie to your parents, don't yield to that temptation. Jesus was tempted the same way. But guess what? He never sinned. Temptation is not a sin. And that's freedom. But the thing is, don't sit in that temptation and think about it. And you start, oh, yeah, I think I want to go do it. And you do it. Then that's sin. But just because you feel something, that's not who you are. You're a born again child of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life and it's never going to get erased. You're going to heaven. You're not going to hell and you're going to do what God has called you to do. So if you want to get hands laid on you, come up here right now. Thank you, sir. I'll keep this. Could I, ha could I have my little oil, Maddie? Could you come up here? <clears throat> Never the same, never the same, never the same. <clears throat> never the same, never the same. Could, could we sing a little something? Lift your hands, the Lord is here, the Lord is here. <clears throat> Jesus is going to touch you today. And you will never be the same after this. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. <clears throat> Never the same. <clears throat> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Never the same. Never the same. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for feeling the desire in his heart. Feeling the desire in his heart. Feel the desire in his heart. In the name of Jesus. Feel the desire in his heart. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So broko bes kere de bim bram baba ba so ko kudish te keva. So brebele de bim so ko. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for filling him with fire. Fire, 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 fire. In the name of Jesus. 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 
Oh, glory to God. Rebe, be, be, se, kebaba, kebaba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I never met you, but I've been, I've been praying for you and thinking about you. God's going to set you apart from this day. You're going to lead. You're a leader. That mental, don't run away. You're different. Walk in it, bro. You got it. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the mantle of a leader right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch his hands, Lord. Bless everything he touches. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for the fire of God in his life. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Yep. Yep. Great men. Great, 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 I thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Oh, Shabaka is Oh, I thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, treasures. Ah, treasures. Treasures revealed. Treasures in you. Yes. Okay, go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
fire of God on the inside on you already if you could go back to your seats we have others that haven't but stay in this place God is still working <clears throat> praise God praise God praise God those that haven't you could come forward if you haven't <clears throat> thank you Lord 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 Oh, you're yeah, praying your heavenly language. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the fire of God, Lord, burning through this generation. I thank you for the fire burning. Oh, yeah, burning down any idols, Father. I thank you for your power, your power falling on them. Oh, in their homes, in their schools, Lord. Even while they're in class, I thank you for your fire coming out of them and what they say and what they do and how they act. Even in their schoolwork, Father, I thank you for your power working in them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you for the gifts, the athletic gifts, the athletic, you play sports, you play sports, the athletic gifts, Lord, I thank you. You're working in them, making a way, even for scouts, scouts, scouts in the name of Jesus. Oh, I thank you for burning, Lord, a leader. Oh, the fire for the leader, Oh, leading, leading, leading the way, leading the way, Mokombange. In the name of Jesus. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm gonna go back up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Praise God. If you've got hands laid on you, if you can make your way back, there's a few more. And I think that's it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Zimbrikilishne ki. Y'all keep praying with us. Keep praying with us. Zombrangilishne zimbrambakan zoko grebedi kishne yerabanda. Zombrambakan glishne zebrebedi ke zambra baba bazoko grebedi lemengishne. Zombringile frabangan glishne zebrabanda angla roshto ko grebenda na. Oh, zimbrebedi ke must stir up the faith. When you pray in tongues, you strengthen yourself. You stir it up. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Where is he? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Is there a, uh, there's a young man from Michigan, his name is Trey. Is he in here? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Y'all keep praying with me. Lift your hands, the power of God's going to fall on you. I thank you, Father. <clears throat> yep. The desires will be filled. New desires will be burst. And you will continue the momentum that you're in, the momentum of faith, the momentum of power. Oh, yes, I hear the Lord. This is the day and this is the hour. Yeah, this is the day and this is the hour. Oh, where you've been crying to find out what is the call? What am I called to do? Oh, he's revealing it even now. And you will go back and you will know. You will, you will know. You will know where to go. You will know what to say. You will know what to do. Oh, and people will start coming to you asking, hey, what is the way? What is the way? Show me the way. Show me the way. Oh, and you will burn and make a way where there is no way. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for unwrapping the gift in him. Oh, yeah. Breaking that. Breaking that. Yeah, breaking that. Break that, Lord. Breaking that. Namokobra. Oh, you are somebody. You are somebody. Namokobra. Oh, my. You've been knowing you've been different since you were a young kid. Oh, don't run from it. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it and don't run. Accept it and don't run. In the name of Jesus. Keep praying with me. Keep praying with me. Oh, yes, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord one more time. Lift your voice up to the Lord. Thank Him for what He's done, what He's doing. Oh Lord, we thank You. 
we glorify you, we magnify you. I thank you, Lord, for setting this generation on fire. I thank you for filling them with your power, Lord. Send them out, Lord, send them out. Let them be trailblazers for you. Let them be trailblazers in word and in deed. I thank you, Lord, glory to God. One last shout of praise, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's not your typical Thursday afternoon, huh? Uh, can you all give up a round of applause for Edward one more time? Hallelujah. Y'all, you can be seated. You can be seated. We are so blessed. We are so blessed to have such powerful men and women of God. Um, with a heart to come impart to us, amen? Amen, okay, here's what we're gonna do next, y'all. Hold up, he forgot something. I'm gonna let you finish, but uh. <laughs> he's, he's the Kanye to my tailor, it's okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> so bad, it's so bad. Shots fired. I know, right, it's okay. She gonna get tackled later. Um, anyway. I'm serious. We're going to be walking around the convention center. Y'all just going to be like, hey, what about that one? And then <laughs> Pastor Catherine gone. Um, so we got a, uh, Edward, these yours, man. I just wanted to, I just interrupted yeah. so you could do what you got to do. So nine and a half, I'm going I'm to ask a question so y'all don't all stampede me. What was one scripture that I used? And if you were nine and a half. I, that was a bad question. That was a bad question. Yeah, first person. There you go. You. Give her, give her a hand clap. She, she'll pay attention. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is a shoe anointing in the house, you guys. Praise God. Testimony. This is like not in my notes, unplanned, but about I don't know four four months ago, five months ago, uh, Pastor George, who's the senior, pa you guys you guys know Pastor George. He was here yesterday. Uh, Pastor George. Something he says in one of our offering confessions is he, is he says he daily loads me with benefits. So I started to confess that. People would say, how are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, you know, he daily loads me with benefits. I'm doing great. Um, and I started to confess that. And all of a sudden, people just started sewing shoes into my life. Um, and yesterday, I received my 13th pair of free shoes in the last four months. It's because someone sewed them into my life. So y'all say that with me. Say, he daily loads me with benefits. Amen. Amen. And you just... Grab all those Jordans out there and bring them down real slow. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do, guys. We um, have a special treat for you. Um, it's a fan favorite every year. We are about to break out into our men and women of faith. Breakouts. So all the gentlemen in the room, where are you at? All right, ladies, we can top that. Where are all the ladies in the room? Yes, amen.